So here we are with Mika, Mr. Fastfinger himself. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, nice to meet you, Adam. Yeah, it's good to finally meet you. Like, like I was saying, I've heard a lot about you over the years, you know, through musician and um, your YouTube channel. You know, there's a lot of things out there. And now with um, you know, the Jennifer Batten song. Glad to be here today with you. It's uh, always a pleasure to uh, meet people like you. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. And I must say a huge congratulations with the albums. Um, both albums are fantastic. So Tremors and Float Mode. Cool. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, two, three years of work, and I'm uh, happy to hear uh, good feedback. It's so uh, they, they, all the uh, work didn't go wasted my time. Yeah. So Flight Mode, when did that come out? Flight Mode came out uh, November last year. Okay. And um, I, I, well, the, the, the thing is Flight Mode and the upcoming Tremors, both mm -hmm. albums, they they were produced at the same time okay. i was kind of a, a year ago i was kind of finishing up the the album and uh then things got a little bit on hold and new music started popping and mm. happening and i s kind of realized that wait a second there's more and more material i start feeling like there could be two albums two yeah. separate albums because i i personally I enjoy more like shorter albums mm -hmm. instead of having one hour of overload of music. I'd rather have shorter packages that are easier to consume and, and enjoy and kind of get a hold of. Yeah. So um, I, I started seeing two albums and I that, that kind of uh, made me... Actually, I did that same thing with the previous Mountain Zone albums as well. I released two... That was like th two 30-minute long albums, and this time it's like two 35-minute long mm. complete albums. Okay. Uh, they're kind of like uh, same story, yep. continuities there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when you, when you recorded these, how did you go about choosing like which one goes on which album? Like, was, there, was there a bit of a theme, or was it just more like this one fits this one? Well, the, the main theme is that flying thing, because I, f I felt like all my previous albums were kind of feeling like they wrote movies for, for the ears and the ima imagination. And this time I thought, well, I had the flight theme. It was, um, that's the whole thing that kind of carries through the, through the songs more or less. Yeah. But um, I found it, well, first of all, I kind of tried to, Throughout the, I mean, couple of years that I, we were working on these songs, I was all constantly trying to kind of imagine a good sequence for the songs, so I would get a good dramatic curve, the start, where it goes and, and where it ends. Yeah. And uh, I find it way easier to make a album that makes sense when you have like nine, ten songs and 35 minutes or something. It's easier to make it make it kind of uh somehow make sense and and uh nice flow but when you have one hour and and 20 songs it's impossible to it's very hard to handle and make it you know work so uh i don't know i i just i tried i kind of uh for the first album i i had pretty good solid sequence for uh, for a long time for the flight mode but then there were some songs that went like this. I tried to, you know, get a good balance between the two. Yeah. Know. And in the end, I actually composed one or two songs to complete the second album as well. So, okay. so I could, I could imagine I need a little bit more faster song here, more energy. So uh, I had to compose or come up with one or two songs like that. Yeah. yeah. So you've already got, there's three songs out at the moment on YouTube, isn't there, from Tremors? Yeah, true. Uh, the uh, the title track, then now the Mammoth Steps with uh, Jennifer Batten, and then the one that was released, I don't know, one and a half years ago, uh, Van Damme Dance. I will I will be putting out one more single uh, in a couple of weeks. Yep. Okay. For the album. It's... Yeah. Now, can we can we talk about that track with uh, Jennifer Batten, which is fantastic, Mammoth Steps? Sure. Yeah. So I know um, 
I met Jennifer, I've had her on the podcast a few times actually, and she's just been great. Oh, cool. Over the whole pandemic, we did a few collaborations together and um, yeah, it's fantastic. So how did you go about with yours? Did you have the track and then just send it to her to say, just go for it? Yeah, the, well, the uh, the track started sort of uh, around the time when the whole pandemic thing started uh, two or three years ago. Uh, I, it was originally like a demo for a, I, I did a demo for the Sensei pedal, the special overdrive or it's more like a booster pedal. And uh, just quickly rolled a, a, a track to demo that pedal and then Later, I realized it's a great uh, potential song for the album, and I, I, I worked at that point. I, I worked with our bass and bass player and drummer, and we uh, recorded our proper uh, rhythm parts for that and everything. Uh, but then I played with that song for a long time and arranged and, and changed guitar parts, and it, it felt like it didn't go it kind of, I couldn't finish that song at all. There was always something that kind of bucked. That didn't. It's just a kind of, I don't know. It's sometimes mental thing. Sometimes you feel like this is finished, and sometimes you feel this is not finished. And this song was like a little bit pain in the butt uh, for a long time. I just couldn't solve it, no matter what I did. But then I started thinking that there should be some guest artist that could take the ball uh, and, and kind of uh, take. You know do something uh i couldn't i just couldn't do all the leads myself so but it took me like half a year for some reason i thought it should be a i started feeling like it should be a like a female guitar female guitar player i don't know why and i was thinking about all the current um, female guitar players uh they're out there and 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 I was thinking still other other uh, uh, kind of options. I couldn't figure it out. But one night, pretty much like uh, February one year ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, Jennifer Batten. <laughs> <laughs> well. And uh, next morning, I, I emailed Thomas Blug. He's a oh, he's one of the greatest guitar players on this planet, and uh, classic rock, blues rock. A bluesy rock player uh, but uh, he um, I know him from uh, he was a amp designer for Hughes and Kettner amplifiers yes. and now he's with the amp one uh, his own company a uh, blue guitar that's his company but yeah uh, I knew that Jennifer uses plays with his amps Thomas's amps and they know each other for since I don't know decades and uh, they're good friends, so I thought, well, I will send Thomas Blue a message that could you introduce me to Jennifer because I didn't know her at all. Uh, he uh, Thomas sent introduction to Jennifer immediately, like praise, like all all these fancy words about me. And then I don't know. It's a few hours later. I was in contact with Jennifer, and she was really uh, excited to be part of this song, and and uh, we agreed uh, with everything and things started going forward and she did her part like within one or two weeks and uh, yeah that was one year ago yeah her solos and this and especially you know, with the whammy bar it just fits really well with the song yeah yeah it, it is i mean her parts everything she did was like uh it just added that magic to the whole song yeah <laughs> uh, it was kind of a uh, Kind of exactly what I was hoping or dreaming it would would, would be, and, and a little bit more. I don't know. Every time I hear the her playing on that track, it just makes me feel so good, and and uh, I don't know, uh, enormous amount of uh, joy in that playing. Yeah. And I had that that melody, that main melody on in the song. I originally just had like a synth playing that with a very that that simple theme, and I I. I, I never even tried to play it on the guitar, but I, I, I just, I, I did kind of give, like I wrote a letter, like I would imagine you maybe play that with a whammy bar, <laughs> that, oh, that okay. melody. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and the way she did, it was, uh, yeah, exactly perfect. Yeah. 
No, that's great. So with the, the solos, did you have your solos already recorded or when she did her? Yeah. Yeah. There's the, the trading uh, between yeah. me and, and Jennifer. Um, I had recorded myself. Actually, those were pretty much the same guitar solos that I did for the the gear demo, the, uh, the Sensei pedal demo that I did a couple of years ago. Uh, that time they were just next to each other, these short guitar solos. And then I just made space for Jennifer to do her thing. Right. And um, But then um, after she did her part, I re-recorded my guitar solos to kind of match it better. Okay. I, so I did some minor tweaks and I also um, I harmonized some some of her tapping stuff, so I, I le learned what she had done and harmonized yeah. it. Oh, well. So um, <laughs> little little tweaks. That yeah. happens usually always when I have somebody guest soloing for me that I might need to call go back and do something to my playing. Yeah. It's just uh, it's a sort of like interaction. I give something to the guest artist. Guest artist does her or his thing and then when i get get it back i kind of try to complement my playing back to yeah. what i i hear that's coming back so it's kind of sort of interaction yeah yeah that's right it's like um like having a conversation really but through guitars yeah it is it is and that's uh if it feels like that if it sounds like that then it's a it's a success yeah I, yeah 100 because i mean especially in that song that's why i asked about your recordings because it just fitted so well, her solos and your ones and everything just came out really well. I, I th well, now when I listened what she did, it was like a, she really kind of like, there. there's some things that she played right before my following part that kind of takes the music towards to that direction. And uh, so I don't know what, what were her thinking when, or how players think i don't think when i play but it's more like feeling but the the kind of how much uh, she possibly considered what i had done and yeah. and uh, kind of i have no idea about uh, how how she did that but it's uh, yeah the, the the flow between the solos and the continuity is essential so that really that really works well and you know when there's the real musicians they, they usually have their ears and they uh that's the the thing you have to listen to what the others play and and kind of react it is communication after all yeah that's yeah. right exactly um yeah so going over to the title of the album tremors so that one there it's got a great riff and you know with your, the speed picking and then the film clip as well so do you do your your own film clips yeah i do i, I do yeah yeah i i um that's my sort of like a second um I, half professionally, I do some video work as well for, for sometimes for others as well. But the, I do some editing uh, as a semi-professional uh, jobs as well. And for me, when I like if I edit videos, I don't know the the rhythm is essential uh, for the video as well, so yeah. that everything kind of feels right and looks right. So, um, like like for example, you know if, if the fingers don't seem to be exactly right for for the video when i hear the stuff on the uh, audio i might you know try to do something with the editing or something to kind of fix the fix the stuff so it uh, looks right to me and uh, yeah but you the whole uh, the video aspect of of uh, together with music it's uh, uh, i think you can ruin the uh, the piece of music with the wrong wrong visuals as well so that is kind of a the, the good video or a video that supports the uh, the music is highly important yeah for sure so your your main logo like you've got on your computer behind you there is that your thing you designed for mr fastfinger yeah yeah th that is um th that's the um well kind of like a strange uh space um my uh i don't know what, what's influenced that that picture i i just started uh play, you know, like doodling uh just drawing stuff and and that sort of came out and uh but mr fast finger that character is so long uh, so old i mean i created that character 2005 and <laughs> um that 
character has been with me for for so long that making him look like this it was kind of like refreshing to me and it kind of uh yeah yeah that was it's kind of a refreshment of of the character <laughs> but i i yeah i, I uh, that that's that's one of the things i do the drawing uh the illustrating all the uh the anim animated stuff and visuals for for the albums and and some of the videos as well yeah, yeah. so that must take a long time doing that like the animation making a move uh, yeah it does well that's why mostly when when you see mr fastfinger animated i'm recycling old stuff uh <laughs> especially all the website stuff that I did back in 2005 or 2006 or seven. Yeah. I know I was like sitting down and drawing for uh, animating for a, for long days and weeks and months. As you get older, you, you, <laughs> you don't want to do that anymore that much. So yeah. uh, I, I recycle a lot, a lot of the old stuff. That's great. I mean, it's good. You can do all of that, like the music, the animation, the videos, everything. It's great. Well, there is no budget uh, for this type of music. I mean, it's so, yeah. you know, it's not a big thing where you would have a huge sales or anything. So, uh, yeah, you either do it all by yourself or it won't happen. It's that kind of thing. It's yep. a kind of passion, passion thing. Yep. Yeah. How about the recording for the album? Was that all done there in your studio? Yeah, for the, for the guitar parts mostly, uh, for these new, albums uh, what hap what happened was uh, i started playing we well first of all we started um, as a band uh, we started using in-ear monitoring and we we use a digital mixer and every time we go to rehearsals or gigs we always have our mixer and we play with in-ears and i my current guitar rig which is this is the amp and this is the amp board and i have pedal board here everything goes line so there's no actual cabinets mic'd or anything. I'm using the cabinet simulation and the same thing, bass goes directly line in. Uh, but for the guitar parts, most of the stuff is recorded here. But sometimes when we, we recorded the basic tracks for the bass and drums in our band rehearsal place or some of the stuff, some of the songs are actually uh, captured live there are several songs on the new albums, at least five songs that were captured during our live stream concert that we did 2021. Uh -huh. And so some of the guitars, uh, some of the songs are completely live. Mm -hmm. And some of the songs have drums and bass from those uh, recordings. And the great thing about having a rig like this is uh, many times I could uh, uh, play some magical lick during band rehearsals when we were you know arranging the song yep. so i could take that moment or that guitar solo from rehearsal recordings combining to, to that stuff that I, I record here and the sound doesn't change mm. so uh sometimes i mix uh recordings from different places yeah Every, every guitar is basically, you know, I, I, main, mainly it's done here. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about for the track uh, Van Damme Dance? That feels like it's a live recording, is it? It is. Yep. Yeah, it, it's live. And uh, I don't know if you saw it on YouTube, on my channel, there's a video. That comes from the live stream concert that we did 2021, like th two years ago. And that song just went so well that I, I didn't want to touch it or re-record it anymore or anything. It was just that energy. I mean, there's some kind of unperfect notes and, and such there, but it's it, the energy is just kind of a very... Uh, you can't repeat that yeah. in your environment. And the, even the guitar solo for that just came out, so it just makes sense. And it, it, I kind of... Uh, it did things that kind of I usually maybe might not do, and and it just, you know, it flew. Uh, it, it has a flow that is natural. Yeah. But it's funny you should say that because I mean I wrote down in my notes here that was probably one of my favorite solos on the album. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of the longer ones. I I really have very very long guitar solos, but that that's a that's that's pretty nice. And there's some like. There's some chordal stuff like all these ambient painting of, of sounds and 
hey, and some um, all kind of phases in that that guitar solo that that that, that came out really nice that yeah that one time <laughs> <laughs> and even like the the bass you know, you've got some really funky bass play, playing going on there as well yeah the the riff that is that was a little bit of battle for uh, for Lasse to get that. I don't know if you, you should be able to hear the uh, this, this one. That that's the riff, and uh, I wanted to wanted it to be played unison with bass and guitar. And Lasse had well, he it was kind of problematic on the bass and uh, I kept kept uh, asking for it and we played it many many times and when we rehearsed that it was pretty slow tempo it was way slower than the live take that you're listening and when we when we were doing that live stream Thomas our drummer starts the song with that drum fill yeah. and I was like Shh, like he played it way faster than it we ever had played and oh, wow. that tempo is that's exactly the right tempo but we never played it that fast we kind of had had a very lazy tempo for that song but during that live stream concert it, it was way faster than we ever did but it uh <laughs> with all the adrenaline and everything it kind of helped us to manage uh through the song anyways but yeah that was that was kind of interesting moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, words yeah. was a yeah, great song. So well done. <laughs> yeah. And that, that song is actually sort of a cover of my, uh, that you probably didn't notice. I, I have a, like a solo album that I released 2018. It's called night overdrive. This song Van Damme dance, the second song, but it's all made uh it's all recorded with ipad and ipad sequencing thing uh like this it's all synthesizer and drum machines okay. and guitar and th that's that project that whole album was i recorded with a i got myself a tape four track tape cassette recorder and uh i bought a bunch of cassettes and i want i started wondering what would i do and i started doing all these kind of like a musical diary recordings that I would do several times a week where I would in the morning I would come here and start a song quickly and record it in the same spot while drinking my morning coffee and that song came out kind of like a very quickly during those sessions uh, in 2000 and I think 17 or something okay. but that song the original version you have to hear it because it's so different <laughs> with the with the machine band without the live musicians it's it's very different yeah i have to go back and have a listen <laughs> yeah it's a shock afterwards if you if you only heard the band version yeah, yeah. Uh, now the other song that really stood out was um your acoustic playing on night sneaker from the new oh album. yeah that's really nice too yeah that's it's a really oh thank you that's a, that's a bit different type of song i mean uh, it kind of goes to a uh, area that uh I rarely touch it's a uh, there's all kind of sounds and uh, acoustic I haven't done so many acoustic numbers um, and people always request for those and so that song kind of brings a little bit different element to the overall yeah and yeah, and when it comes to building an album it kind of uh, sometimes you have to have these numbers that kind of bring in something refreshing and something different yeah, yeah so it's not all power chords and and speed picking for the 35 minutes or something <laughs> yeah that's a really nice nice playing and you know sure just your tone on the acoustic too sounds great yeah you know, very very clean i mean i know all your playing is very clean anyway but especially on the acoustic yeah you know, some people they rely on their effects a lot and can't do it on acoustic where i think this really shows your playing yeah yeah with acoustic guitar it's even more crucial like how how and where you pick everything affects the tone so uh, uh it's dramatic effect how you how all the dynamics and everything kind of really 
affects the tone so uh sure yeah but it wasn't uh, that wasn't the one take thing uh i kind of uh i did some several takes that i punched in punched out for for that guitar solo there it was okay, yeah. partly because well uh there is some kind of strange stuff there but also because of the tone uh, if i wasn't happy with some note ringing in a wrong way i uh I would need to fix the whole whole part for that mm. to be honest yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now just one more yeah. song to talk about on the album the levitating um i love your oh. outro for this song with the typing part at the end yeah the outro the that 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 came up beautiful it's yeah. kind of uh it goes to 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 space yeah, I, mean, I, I, I mean yeah it, it, the it has some piano things or something together with the guitar guitar stuff in the outro and the the um, the, the overall thing levitating i i imagined fast finger or that character floating uh, uh high on the sky in the middle of the night alone there kind of almost you know somewhere in the stratosphere or some somewhere very up yeah. and uh, that kind of feeling and uh, i originally wrote that as a the melody as i was thinking piano playing that thing oh, okay. i want very simple nice melody uh then i well i realized that it's a guitar album that it's supposed to be so i thought well let's try it on the guitar and uh that guitar tone in and that song is kind of pretty unique or different i used the uh di signal together with i i think i blended some amps amp tone but that di kind of brought in a lot of high frequencies and that that kind of mm. different kind of dynamics as well for the for the tone but it's yeah. uh, that uh that song came out really nice and those timpanis oh, yeah. <laughs> i have to tell the story uh when i was when i had finished that song or i thought i was finished it was the day I was just mixing it, and uh, I. It was just day after or the day that I read it that Bellis had died. Uh, that was I was uh, around a year ago as well, I think, maybe April two thousand twenty-two, and uh, I started thinking Vangelis and, and Blade Runner, end credits theme, which has those theme punish that dun 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 that kind of very. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. timpani drums that go very like this and I, I always thought well it's kind of it's such a uh, crazy concept of having such timpanis there and that song is like it's just perfect and and how how can somebody uh imagine such a such a thing and uh when i was thinking that, that i realized that damn some timpanis could actually be very nice for this song that kind of could add something and uh, i programmed some timpanis there but then I played this song uh, during the band rehearsals to Lars and Thomas, uh, and uh, Thomas said that he he would uh, be able to access real timpanis. Mm. Uh, so we we actually went to record some timpani for the for that track. In the end, it's a combination of the uh, human played. Uh, Thomas played some timpani, but also add a little bit of uh, the sample timpanis for a like octave lower sound so it's a very deep sound but that's yeah right. that, that's that song came out kind of uh special and and something else yeah so it's great i mean i love hearing those type of stories because it it makes you want to go back and listen to the whole album again you know, to hear all those things yeah <laughs> when the album comes out i'll um i actually i, I posted i think a year ago or something but the, we in the same room where we had the timpanis there was also a bass bass drum like an orchestra bass drum that was this tall i mean it was like this size yeah. so in this in the beginning of the song there's like that's ah. a very low drum and that's the and i didn't touch the pitch or anything it's just very like very low uh, bass drum and we re recorded that uh, as well in that in that room it was that yeah. was really cool my guitar tones in the both of these albums uh i have a I have to tell this because it's a special thing as well it might make you listen with your headphones but all the lead guitars acoustic guitars and all the synths have been recycled through tape cassettes oh really 
Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. Maybe you can see, but I, here I do have a tape cassette deck here. It's a three head deck and, and it works like tape delay. So if I send audio to this thing, I, I can listen to it back real time with with just a little bit of delay because the tape goes through the record head to the tape uh, the playhead and there's a little bit of delay but i record everything all the guitar tracks through this and i use different tapes and and bias and dolby and whatever it takes to kind of enhance the tracks but that adds some kind of special grain and very very little modulation and our uh, speed changes and stuff yeah. um any even jennifer's track went through the cassette she <laughs> just don't, don't know that <laughs> but uh, everything everything tends to go through that uh it's kind of like my finalizer i i i like to do with with all the tracks because it adds something or at, at least i think so <laughs> so maybe it's totally mental thing <laughs> probably it is a mental thing but I love to do that and I kind of yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have well I think it's out of the picture here but I have a row of tapes here uh, with like, different types of of <laughs> tapes that that I I use for uh processing uh audio. Sometimes I use like crappy type 1 cas cassettes to get all these dropouts and mm. low quality if if like a synth track requires some of that or if i have a guitar track that i want to be more hi-fi then i use quality tapes okay. but, uh, i love doing that i love doing that it kind of uh, somehow makes the whole recording more special to me again yeah that's right yeah i remember i mean i've got the old four track here where you, know, you get the, well, the tdk like the sa90 or the ad90 and the higher quality ones <laughs> yeah 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 like uh wait a second well this is this is the uh, maybe the like the eighties. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> where is it? SA ninety. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But no, overall, though, it's a yeah, fantastic album. Um, just can't wait for everyone to hear it. Yeah, cool. I'm I'm, I'm happy to hear that you, you you think so because the well the uh, m many of my al my 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 uh, biggest fans who buy the albums are have uh, actually bought this album like along with the flight mode okay yep but they, uh so they have heard it but the big audience uh who use and listen through spotify and so on they they haven't heard it yet yep. so um i've gotten good feedback about this album and and i really look forward to expose it to the 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 general audience yep so it's uh I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, happy to hear that you, you find it. Uh, oh yeah, that's great. Enjoyable. Yeah. So what's the release day? Is it April seventh? Was it? Actually, the, yeah, the tremors comes fourteenth of April. Oh, 14th, Sorry. Um, now I just want to quickly so, ask you also about your YouTube channel, which I started going through. There's some great things on there as well for your, you know, like the the last last one you did with the tapping. The was it the crazy tapping? Tom and Jerry type thing, cat and mouse. <laughs> oh, that one. That's that's a yeah. I I do um, almost every week. I I put out these. Uh, I call it animated leaks. Uh, these kind of quick uh, guitar lessons. Yep. Many times there are about things that are currently hot topics for myself, or some things that I've been recently discussing or going through with students. And this uh, this tapping thing. Oh, the previous day I had two students uh, who I uh, we went through some tapping ideas, and that Tom, Tom and Jerry that uh, mouse cat mouse chase thing has been a kind of favorite leak for many students uh, throughout the years. It's kind of kind of funny, uh, busy kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure exactly how that goes with like the classic Billy Sheehan uh steve i tapping thing that they they did in the uh like edm and smile uh yeah that 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 era thing i don't think it's exactly that kind of thing but similar kind of thing where you, you kind of move uh back and forth uh horizontally on on the string uh, it's such a i don't know fun yeah just 
for the entertainment mostly that thing not nothing yeah. too serious yeah, yeah. Right. and actually talking about the uh, billy sheen steve i your video with uh, paul gilbert where he comes over the top of you and starts playing as well that's really cool <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a scary moment when you enter the stage with the jam with Paul Gilbert, <laughs> and uh, I I played with an amplifier uh, amplifier that was the whole sound was so far away from my own tone, I, and I hadn't been able to test it beforehand, but I, um, I one of the the, the funniest things, well, I I think it turned out pretty good, uh, I, I guess. I don't think I've ever watched it completely through that that jam. I just I thought it was good and uh, I put it out on YouTube. Yeah. But the um, what was interesting that all my speed picking disappeared when I was with Paul Gilbert. I couldn't do any of that stuff. I just kind of just couldn't in the presence of of Mr. Gilbert. It was like all the all the alternate picking was like so much based on his stuff from the intense rock and those those are um, his yeah. early 90s instructional videos that uh, somehow when he's there and you're there you just can't do any of that that <laughs> stuff at all it was kind of interesting so but it, it was uh it was really uh i had a good good feeling i got a good feeling from of that that jam with him it was a uh, scary scary jam to do but i survived so i feel like i'm a little bit stronger as a human now <laughs> or something yeah that was great i loved it, it yeah cool. yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. So that that type of jams when you get to play with somebody who's your idols or somebody who's so good that i feel like you, there's always something that you learn or you get some something out of those moments. Yeah, it's exactly. very, uh, it's super exciting. And uh, and if you survive and land on your feet, sort of, yeah. it's <laughs> uh, it's such a positive um, experience. Yeah, there, there will be a video more or less in a couple of days, I think. Uh, with them, um, I did a totally improvised. Mm playing with Jordan Rudis from Dream Theater this uh you know Jordan Rudis a uh, keyboard playing for uh, keyboard player for Dream Theater and uh we had a session with him uh, when when Dream Theater was in Finland early February and uh, we were in studio and he just starts playing and I start playing completely improvising and uh I'm I'm kind of uh just it's so like you have to be 100% focused to be able to follow, you have no idea about the keys or key ch uh, chord changes and key changes, or everything that he's throwing at you, mm -hmm. kind of completely ear playing, <laughs> trying to follow that thing and kind of uh, sometimes, you know, it's a, it's so super exciting thing to do, but there, there's a good clip, uh, like, I don't know, three, three minutes or something that I, I'll posting out. Oh, cool. Uh, no, it's going to be great. I mean, between that one and your Paul Gilbert video, and now with Jennifer Batten, <laughs> who's next? Yeah, oh, well, I have no idea. <laughs> but it, but it's, it's every now and then when you get to play with somebody that is so, so uh, on much higher level, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it levitates you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully lets you um, land on a next level. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, that's right. Like I said, I've been playing with you for a while now on musicians through um, Practice Heart, was it? One of them? Yeah, Practice Heart. Yeah. 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 That session, that was done in 2013. Mm. Uh, there's an EP called String Weaver that is based on those tracks. There's three of, I, I did three tracks for them uh, as yeah. like a etudes. Yeah. One thing that I learned by doing th those three tracks for them was I needed to create material, somebody else in the musician, all these uh, people could actually play. So I had to really simplify my playing because if you listen to the previous album in motion, it was the, it, it was where I went to 
too many notes and too you know all that fast and I, I don't know what went to me i was like my my kind of mispath or i went to a direction where i haven't been uh, afterwards but th that's a very extreme album yeah. uh, when it comes to amount of notes and it's very aggressive but after doing that in motion album then i did, i was supposed to do this thing for a musician i realized i need to really simplify my playing and uh that was a very really healthy thing for me uh, i really learned that well the actual music is in the kind of being able to say the things it, it as simple and clear loud and clear as possible yeah but still i mean you're saying they're simple but they're yeah. still like the level 10 songs when you listen they're like the the last songs you get to you know the highest level yeah i guess them so. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> but still yeah <laughs> Yeah, the um, a Waki Waki, that's the hardest song out of those three songs uh, from that bunch that I created. They they wanted a very, very hard song. I thought, well, let's do a mediocre or something. It would be <laughs> challenging, but not too hard. It should be, still be a playable. Yeah. yeah. Well, but no, thanks again. I really appreciate your time today. And yeah, so I know we've gone a bit over, but <laughs> it's been great. Thanks for having, and having me and... Uh, wax on <laughs> <laughs> thank you hey everyone welcome to the become a guitarist today podcast and don't forget